the sisterly kingdom of Bahrain celebrates on Wednesday its 49th independence anniversary and the 21st anniversary of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's assumption of office. Since 1971, the Kingdom of Bahrain has been able to march towards progress and development by relying on its own capabilities as well as developing a strategic vision that enhances its economic and financial capabilities. The Kingdom of Bahrain has witnessed a significant progress after King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa took reins of power in 1999. He announced constitutional reforms and declaring the National Charter through which the parliamentary and democratic life of Bahrain was restored. Residents of Egypt's rest of North Sinai region ran for their lives when an IS group affiliate occupied their villages. Now they are returning to find their homes will be trapped. Egyptian security sources said around 15 people have been killed by improvised explosive devices since mid-October in villages around Beir al Abd in the northwest of the troubled province. Egyptian security forces have been battling a long-running insurgency in the Sinai Peninsula spearheaded by local IS affiliate. The European Union is postponing nearly 90 million euros in budget support payments to Ethiopia because of the conflict in the northern Tigray region. The document said the decision is intended to highlight the EU's wish for a cessation of hostilities and resolution through political means and is concerned about restrictions on humanitarian and media access. The document, authenticated by two diplomatic officials in Addis Ababa Wednesday, also notes the EU's call for a follow-up on allegations of human rights abuse during the conflict, which began in early November. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro said on Wednesday he was ready to work with Joe Biden as he congratulated the U.S. president-elect on his victory more than a month after the November 3rd election. President Bolsonaro, a staunch ally of outgoing President Donald Trump, joined Russia's Vladimir Putin and Andres Manuel López Obrador of Mexico among the last high-profile leaders to recognize Biden's victory after it was confirmed Monday by the U.S. Electoral College. President Bolsonaro had clashed with Biden during the U.S. election campaign after the Democratic president-elect criticized Brazil over its failure to protect the Amazon rainforest from wildfires. South Korea's Prime Minister said on Wednesday the country's highest priority is securing more hospital beds to handle a record surge in coronavirus cases and plant a corresponding spike in death. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency reported 1,078 new coronavirus cases as of midnight Tuesday, the highest since the start of the pandemic. The latest number came three days after the daily tally topped 1,000 for the first time since South Korea confirmed its first coronavirus infection in January. London on Wednesday moved into the highest level of coronavirus restrictions in an effort to control rising infection rates, dealing another blow to hospitality venues before Christmas. The British capital's move into Tier 3 means people cannot socialize with anyone not from their household or support bubble but can meet in groups of up to six in public places outside. Health Secretary warned last Monday that London had seen a sharp rise in daily cases and hospital admissions. The National Audit Office said on Wednesday Britain has agreed to spend £3.7 billion on COVID-19 vaccines and in most cases will bear the liability if claims are made against the pharmaceutical firms involved. The government has agreed supply deals for 357 million doses of seven different candidate shots but has not gone into detail about how much it has spent on indemnity agreements, citing commercial confidentiality around the contracts. The National Audit Office said the business ministry had signed firm deals for five of the candidates, including the Pfizer-BioNTech shot, which has already been approved and is being rolled out, as well as those developed by Oxford, AstraZeneca, Francis Valenivia, Novavax, and Moderna. The United States and the European Union on Wednesday pushed forward approval of two leading COVID-19 candidate vaccines as fears grew of a fresh wave of infections over Christmas. Health professionals have registered over 1.6 million lives lost and more than 72 million cases 
of the novel coronavirus since it emerged in China last December. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued an upbeat briefing about the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine ahead of a meeting by experts on whether to grant it emergency approval. Egypt has received the second batch of China-based Sinopharma's COVID-19 vaccine, totaling 50,000 doses. The delivery brings Egypt's inventory of the jab to 100,000 enough to have 50,000 people inoculated. An official at the Ministry of Health and Population said the vaccination plan was being drawn up and the aim is to provide 10 million doses of the Chinese vaccine as Egypt will be receiving more doses during the current month in a row. Shanghai-based Fuzhen Pharmaceutical Group says it will buy at least 100 million doses of a COVID-19 vaccine from Germany's BioNTech SE for use in mainland China next year if it's approved. The Chinese government has not announced supply deals with Western drug makers, which instead have partnered local firms. Posen said it will be entitled to 60% of annual gross profit from sales of doses it will make from imported bulk ingredients and 65% of profit from sales of doses imported ready for use. Australia's consumer watchdog launched legal action against Facebook on Wednesday, alleging the social media giant misled thousands of Australians by collecting user data from a free virtual private network or VPN service advertised as private. The platform could face a fine if found guilty of deceiving users as Australia takes an increasingly assertive stance towards powerful US tech titans. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission has accused Facebook and two of its subsidiaries, Facebook Israel and Onovac Incorporation, of misleading people who download its VPN app Onavu product by collecting and using their very detailed and valuable personal activity data. Milwaukee Bucks superstar Giannis ended speculation about his future on Wednesday after agreeing a new long-term deal reported to be the biggest in NBA history. Janice, who would have been able to enter free agency next year, said he had agreed a five-year deal with the Bucks. ESPN reported that Janice's contract extension was worth $228 million. US dollars. The deal allows an opt-out after four years. Bangladesh on Wednesday said international cricket will return to the country in January with a tour by the West Indies after the COVID-19 disruption. The Bangladesh Cricket Board said the Caribbeans will play three one-day internationals and two tests against the home side in January and February in what would be the first series in the countries since March. According to an internary release by the Bangladesh Cricket Board, the tourists will arrive on January 10th and quarantine for seven days before a warm-up match against the local selection on January 18th. Fijians living in the path of an approaching super cyclone were told to hunker down at home or head to emergency shelters immediately on Wednesday as authorities warned of the storm's potential to uproot buildings and cause mass destruction. The Fiji Meteorological Service said Cyclone Yasa had intensified into a top-of-the-scale Category 5 storm with gusts of up to 280 km per hour. It's on track to hit Fiji late Thursday, and the National Disaster Management Office said around two-thirds of the island nation's population of 900,000 people were in its path. The Japanese Weather Agency said on Wednesday an earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 5 struck the Hokkaido region in Japan's northernmost prefecture. According to the Japan Meteorological Agency, the Templars Epic Center was located at a latitude of 42.7 degrees north and longitude of 144.2 degrees east and occurred at a depth of 60 kilometers.